for joining us uh, in another episode of Sick Treasures from around the world. Uh, my name is Sanmit Singh, and I will be your host. I'm joining you from the East Coast in Maryland. And our guest today is Namita Jagbal, Jaspal, all the way from Chandigarh. And what's interesting is every episode has been about Sikh treasures from around the world. What better place for Sikh treasures than Punjab or Amritsar, which is sort of like the hub of uh, our faith. So I'm gonna start a little bit, um, I'm gonna start off with a little bit about the Sikh foundation. Um, 50 years of art or in Sikh art specifically in the United States has, is amazing. Uh, not until 10, 15, maybe 20 years ago, Sikh art was just in the hands of a handful. Even the knowledge, whether it was books, exhibitions, was very, very scarce. So I think all the hard work of Dr. Kapani, his team, Sonia, and countless others in the past really 10, 15 years, Sikh art has encouraged uh, young folks like myself and countless others to to be educated and get active in the Sikh art and antiquity space. So thank you to the Sikh Foundation for that and thank you for hosting this. Um, I wanna begin today uh, by just a little bio on Namita so we all get uh, introduced to who she is and what she does. Um, this little introduction uh, is nothing compared to all the amazing works that, uh, work that she does. I'll give you a little insight into her background Namita Jaspa inherited skills of art and aesthetics and passion for science, but opted to pursue post, in her post-graduation conservation of cultural property after her graduation in science from Delhi University in 92. Then four years of intense training at the National Museum Institute provided the right foundation to start a career in conservation. She is currently practicing conservation cons uh, consultancy for heritage property including monuments and collections. She has been doing independent research in conservation techniques and procedures in Indian context. Her expertise includes conservation and preservation technologies and procedures for conservation of varied materials like wall paintings, paper, photographs, textiles, ceramics, stone, metal, and archeological objects. So without further ado, Namita, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we're gonna jump right into it. Um, I think I'm gonna talk for another two minutes before I hand it over to you. Uh, what everyone is so anxious and excited to talk about today is the Chola Saib of Guru Har Gobind Saib Ji, um, which is the famous Sakhi, the, the one of the most popular Sikh uh, festivals, which is Diwali or Bandishor Divas. So Bandi Shor, the, the Sakhi goes that Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji was imprisoned in Gwalia. Um, and Jahangir, the then government, said that we would release you. But Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji said that I would, I would be okay with leaving this prison if you allow for the 52 kings, the other Raja that you've imprisoned here. And Jahangir laughed and said that if any of them can hang on to your, your chola, I will let them go. So Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji got a special chola made with 52 kaliya. And every one of these Raja held on to this chola and were freed and left the, the, the government of that time in awe. So I think most of the Sikh world had no idea that this chola actually existed. Uh, this was in a small pend near Ludhiana. Um, and it was gifted to that Sangat by Guru Sahib themselves. Uh, and about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, Namita was tasked with this, this grand task of conservating such an important priceless relic of the Sikh community. Um, so I think this is an amazing, uh, and I'm really excited to hear what Namita has to say and how she went about uh, working on this and what the processes were. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Namita. Sashrikal, and thank you, Sanmit. Uh, thank you, Tanmeet and Sonia also. Rather, I would like to thank Sikh Foundation International for inviting me over to share my experiences as a conservator, particularly with Sikh heritage. 
and my warm wishes to all the participants over here. Um, I'll just start sharing my screen now. So today uh, I'll be talking mainly about two important uh, conservation works that are related to Sikh heritage. And um, um, I personally really feel um, privileged to be able to do these works. First is about uh, Chola Sahib Ji, which is uh, of sixth, uh, Chola Sahib Ji of sixth Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji. And, uh, uh, I have written the wrong date. It is 2011 instead of 13. I'm sorry for that. So we visited the village in the month of July 2011. And uh, this was the condition uh, of Chola Sahib Ji. We couldn't open it at that time. But on 18th of July, of course, the process uh, of conservation had to start. And um, it was taken out of the display case. And the on-site conditions I would like to share with everybody, like because the Gurdwara Sahib Ji was under construction. So uh, all the prayers and everything was happening in a big room uh, near the Langar Hall. And uh, this is where the Sangat would sit in front of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And uh, this was the portion, that is the portion where Guru Granth Sahib Ji is seated. And this is the portion which was given to us to do our work of conservation. And uh, the photo is, has been taken from the entrance. So the Sangat would just uh, pass through the Chola Sahib Ji conservation work being done and then uh, offer their prayers in the next area. Uh, we were always uh, accompanied by Seva Dajis and uh, who would really help us out in whatever we needed. And as we just uh, started um, opening up the Chola Sahib Ji, which was pinned onto a board through with the help of thumb pins, we found that the upper layer was uh, that was displayed, that was visible from outside was much uh, darker than the inner portion, which was protected. Now, the process of conservation, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, mention the basic steps that we go through. First of all, we go through the history or the case history of the object, um, which is called anamnesis. And um, then we make a condition assessment, the present condition of the object and uh, analyze. We do various kinds of analysis. Then we make a conservation plan based on whatever we have observed in the diagnosis. And then the curative or actual curative and preventive conservation processes are carried out. And I'll just mention the analysis, which is visual, microscopic, and so the chemical tests. The deterioration problems that we saw in the Chola Sahib Ji were basically soiling and accretions, stress due to vertical display, stains due to rust and other things. And um, rust was because of the thumb pins which were used to uh, display it on a board. And uh, the wooden support was also damaging and previous restoration attempts. Natural aging of course was there. Now this is um, uh, the first, on the first um, look through a visual inspection, you can see a lot of dirt and grime that has been um, trapped on the dress. And uh, because of this dust and uh, grime, uh, which is, you can call it soiling, the microorganisms get a substrate to grow upon and propagate. So you can see, I'll just uh, use a pen to So you can see this area, there was a huge circular fungal colony, which was uh, uh, half of it was on the arm of the Chola Sahib Ji and half of it was uh, on the board, on the rather velvet um, clothing, which was uh, on the board. Another thing that we observed uh, by a normal visual inspection was that uh, the it was a striped fabric and the stripes were because of, uh, they were made because of the difference in the weave pattern. Um, 
both uh, the lighter area and the dark area, the thicker area were plain weaves, but the thicker area was a tight uh, plain weave, while the thinner area was a uh, loose uh, plain weave. So the uh, loose plain weave had just uh, vanished. It was uh, uh, destroyed, lost. And so the thicker portions were joined together and they were sewn together uh, as uh, previous restoration attempts. There were thumb pins also, not just on the Chola Sahibji. There was a kinari which was uh, holding them because the edges were not very strong. We had to remove the kinari uh, and uh, the thumb pins. Then we also, after this visual inspection and the record, whatever we recorded uh, regarding Chola Sahibji, we made some uh, observations with magnifiers and microscopes, and we confirmed the weave pattern and other things. The micro, uh, the microorganisms also, the fungus that was grow uh, growing over there. Apart from that, we do, did some solubility tests of the fabric itself, and uh, this was actually. Uh, possible because when we were shifting Chola Sahibji from the board uh, to a proper um, surface, uh, we found certain fallen uh, uh, threads and we just uh, picked up those threads for the analysis. There were not many of them, so uh, we were depending on a very little amount of uh, fibers that we could uh, collect from there. And luckily, it was like a magic that uh, the we, we could make out some very good slides out of it after the chemical analysis. We had to watch it in the under the microscope also. And they were very interesting. I won't go into the details, but if some uh, fabric uh, person is uh, or conservator is uh, sees this uh, slide, it is amazing that in uh, just a few slides that we could make, uh, they were so uh, perfect, showing all the proper uh, things that we need to identify the fiber. So they were showing all the proper characters. It's a triangular uh, rod-like structure. Then uh, comes the curative conservation process, uh, which involves initially we just, uh, we, actually the first, this was the first time that Chola Saibji was being treated uh, scientifically. And um, we were also very scared, like everybody else around, the Sangat around. And uh, we wanted minimum intervention. Actually, that is the main thumb rule of conservation practice also. So we used some sponges, which are special uh, natural rubber sponges. And they, they are also called dust attracting sponges. We had cut them into smaller pieces. And with that, we would just touch the Stola Sabji and the dirt would come out. You can see these ones. And there was a huge lot of uh, such sponges used for three days. This is just a little portion when we started. Actually, we didn't take much pictures after that. We were more focused on the work. So, so many such sponges, little pieces of these sponges were used to first pick up the loose dirt. But there was still a lot of dirt and stains and many other things accumulated within the fabric. So we, uh, of course, had to decide on the wet cleaning uh, that is done in deionized water. But we were not using any saponifying or any cleansing agent because we could not risk Chola Sahibji. This was the first time and it would have been a shock kind of treatment for uh, Chola Sahibji if we would have used uh, a lot of rinsing and all. So they all need a lot of rinsing so that there is no residue left. So we just uh, dipped Chola Sahibji in deionized water and we didn't dry it just like that, uh, like the normal drying process. We dried it with blotters. We took out the water from one corner and uh, dried it with blotters and then air dried. It. Uh, so not much of movement or handling was done in wet cleaning and uh, its drying process. But you can see uh, rather, uh, again, I missed uh, another slide in which you can see some cans over here. These are, these are deionized water. And there is one slide where I was showing that uh, an empty deionized water uh, can was filled with this water and it was very dark black water. And people, Sangat, would like to take that uh, those cans uh, of this water uh, to their homes uh, out of faith, and almost all of it was um, um, used in this. And uh, after wet cleaning, 
you could easily feel the strength Chola Sahib Ji had gained. Uh, it was much stronger than before. Not exactly like new, but it had gained a lot of strength. And now we could open it. So the, there are many slides, many pictures, and we don't have that much of time. So I haven't uh, included all of them. So we could open it. it uh, there are pictures in which the whole thing is opened and we could count. We, d we didn't stretch it uh, much to uh, know the exact length, but it was given on uh, in one of the information leaflets. So, oh, oh God. Leaflets uh, over here. Uh, I don't think if it is uh, there on the display case anymore because there's a new display case now and we are planning to uh, do Seva with a even better display case in which uh, the microenvironment is controlled and uh, Chola Sahib Ji is preserved for longer. So there should be no dust, oxygen or low oxygen environment and uh, low humidity. So here the information is given it, and in this also it is given that it is not exactly 52 Kaliya, Kaliya are 18 to 20, but um, there are Taniya on the top and small and big Taniya. And if we count all of them together, then the number is 52. So the, this information was initially there when we went, we, when we saw the Chola Jasaib Ji first in the old display case. So after wet cleaning, when it was a little easier to handle uh, Chola Sahib Ji, we had to take very carefully the old restoration. Still now, we were using, um, uh, mostly, most of the time we were using cotton gloves or nitrile gloves. When we were doing wet treatment, it was rubber gloves, nitrile gloves. And when we were doing inspection, it was uh, cotton gloves. But uh, it's not very easy. It's not very, uh, you can't do precise work uh, with gloves on. So here we didn't want to damage uh, whatever little uh, pieces of stripes were um, preserved. So uh, we took out all these um, old zones and um, these are again, there were a lot many old restoration attempts. So it was all open and now the stripes were hanging, just they were, they were aligned in, a pro, in their proper shape. Even if there is a gap, it was left like that. And to fill all that, we used, uh, instead of needle and thread, because it would create more holes and all would weaken the fabric, we used a very mild adhesive, which can be, which is water-based and it can be easily removed without even the adhesive going inside the fabric. So it is very light, it is very weak kind of uh, uh, treatment, but we intentionally do that so that the original material is not damaged. And I think now after 10 years, means next year it will be 10 years because it was 2011 when we did, did this. Um, so uh, it, uh, now it might need another um, treatment, fresh treatment or with this um, adhesive film which is actually which we created on a crippling, which is almost transparent uh, silk and it was just placed over it. And here the Chola Sahib Ji, you can say, see it in a shape, proper shape because the stripes were all uh, damaged and many of them were lost. So this is the final condition of Chola Sahib Ji. This is the before condition. You can see how weak and it's falling because it was vertical also at uh, some point in time. When we went there, it was at a slope, uh, but before that it was uh, vertical also. So it's, um, the, its own weight is uh, causing the stress. And now it is like this. And the only thing that uh, um, I want now is to, if we can provide uh, some controlled microenvironment. This is the team. I think there was another boy. He is right now, I think, in the army. Uh, he's not here. He was also a part of the team. And uh, these two were young conservators. They had just finished their master's that time and um, wanted to intern uh, with me. So this is what we want. This is the instrument, like this is from another, um, uh, this picture is taken from online. And this is a transparent kind of thing just to show how the display case is made. Suppose this is upper portion is the display case. Some instruments are installed at the bottom and uh, um, high pressure area is created. Um, 
um, because uh, that way the air won't move inside from whatever gaps, little gaps the display case might be having at the joints. And uh, low oxygen environment is also there and humidity is also controlled. Temperature is generally controlled in all these cases or even in the rooms or, um, but at the, uh, at the Gurdwara Sahib, I don't think the temperature would can be controlled uh, continuously, but that doesn't damage that much as the changes in humidity and the dust. So this was uh, all about Chola Sahib Ji. And uh, the next is uh, Darbar Sahib Ji, Sri Harmandar Sahib Ji. Where, here it was 2013, so I mistake, uh, by mistake, I just uh, put the date over there. That was in 2011, and this is in 2013. And the talks had started again in the same month, June, July, but uh, we started um, actually uh, studying and analyzing or uh, doing the condition assessment in September 2013. And for three months, we were just uh, doing the analysis. And uh, just, um, okay, it's the next one. So uh, we basically worked on, um, I have written here paintings, but it was actually much more than paintings. There was stucco work and um, uh, gilded stucco work and some floral elements, the sc sculpted elements around the arches. A lot of written uh, shabads also. So there was much more than just paintings. And these are the areas where we worked like ceilings. They were all stucco, gilded stucco work, arches also gilded stucco work, and design elements were there. The walls, walls were mainly painted. And there were window arches, they were also mainly painted. This is just a model of uh, the first floor. Now, there were certain things which were beyond the decision making of conservation scientists or the conservators working in such live religious sites, uh, because uh, there are um, rituals uh, which were very frequent and uh, which, uh, um, which might have some good or bad effects, like um, the rituals of uh, decorating and, and Every month there would be some celebration or the other. And uh, we had garlands and flowers, bouquets. Uh, they were um, uh, hung on the walls, the corners and the ceilings. And there are things like uh, we spray water also, perfumed water. So at times it increases the, for paintings it might be a little damaging. Then cleaning rituals were also there because uh, people would sangat would come and they would really feel good uh, if they are doing seva in all the nooks and corners of the Bar Sahib Ji. And they would uh, clean the ceiling, the arches also and with wet towels, which might uh, damage the paintings and celebrations and festivals that I've already mentioned and uh, management of inflow of pilgrims. This is something I would like to uh, people to study uh, about this because the structure is a uh, heritage structure, very old when there was no electricity and uh, uh, there's a huge inflow of pilgrims uh, from all over the world, and I don't know if um, the structure can um, um, bear the lo that much of uh, load. So that should be studied, I think. That is the structural part, which is beyond our con art conservation thing. Then there was telecast and electronic device management because the wires were hanging from various places. And I think that is done now. So initially, these were the things which we thought are affecting the art conservation uh, part also, but it was beyond the decision making of a conservator. So these are the on-site conditions. This is the, uh, the area above. This is first floor above Harkipori. And um, in this map, you can see it is this area, this whole thing. This is Parikrama, and this is the area which is in this picture. So every day there was there were huge uh, number of Sangat. With, and uh, this is a Parikrama, which is a little less people right now, but most of the time, uh, you can see in another picture, this is also Parikrama. If we are working there, everybody is curious and that's good. 
uh, rather I'll just uh, mention, uh, this is again the upper area above Harkipori, where one of my teammates is uh, trying to clean the arch. Uh, but of course, it must be scared because of the rush around. Um, now the condition assessment, diagnosis. Um, uh, we did, again, the same process, visual inspection, technical analysis, microscopic analysis, and chemical analysis. And uh, we made uh, the damage mapping, which was also done accurately, more accurately on Photoshop and different uh, softwares. And we found through these, this uh, later on, when we removed the wooden frames of the glasses, when we started the work, we found that there were paintings underneath. These uh, underneath paintings are by, by Gyan Singh. And we came to know from his um, uh, family now, um, which lives around uh, Golden Temple and have a shop over there. They explained that how he was, he wouldn't come even for dinner unless and until he had finished the portion because these are true frescoes, the underneath paintings. These are true frescoes. As a true fresco means uh, the painting done on a wet lime. And um, uh, an artist would plaster only that portion of wall which he can uh, paint in one day. So, um, and he has to do it very meticulously with a uh, small wooden thing. He uh, pushes it also, knocks on it so that the pigment goes inside the plaster, they are more stable. But when they might have been falling apart or maybe da getting damaged because of a lot of Sangat and people touching the paintings, so they might have uh, decided upon repainting because at that time, maybe the concept of conservation or preservation wasn't there. So these paintings were later overpainted by Bhai Atma Singh. And so they are not true fresco because they are dry, already painted surface. They are not on um, uh, wet plaster. So this was all done. So we wanted to see the underneath paintings, but uh, they were not visible because the layer was thick. So we tried certain technology. We also studied the environment, wind direction, because in certain areas, the damage was more than uh, other areas, which were not directly in front of the windows carrying the humid wind. And we also did uh, analysis of the pigments um, to some extent, and they were all earth pigments, the mineral pigments, which are very stable. They don't change with time and uh, there's no chemical change. So these are, this is the list of pigments that we identified. And after that, the deterioration part, you can see the deterioration in one of the panels. This was covered by glass, but even then, the damage is so much because maybe this was in front of the this particular panel, I know, because we started our work from here and this was in front of the window uh, in the parikma area. So the humid air which gets trapped in the glass cannot move out and it causes this kind of flaking. And there are uh, actually there are many kinds of damages because there are different kinds of artworks over there, but there are three categories I'll explain in the next picture. Here, this area has all the three main categories of damage because here in the right side, you can see there's a frame, it is covered by glass. And this portion is actually from a window, uh, window arch. So this portion, upper portion has a similar painting, but it is yellowed and brown because it was a curved area and it couldn't be covered by glass at that time. Nowadays, we might have some acrylic sheets which can be molded into a shape but that time it was, they were just being protected by glass and the cover areas, um, you couldn't put glass. So they had varnished it. Varnished it. And uh, the varnish is uh, at that time, whatever varnish was being used, it uh, has a characteristic of aging and um, uh, with aging, it becomes brittle and yellow and then brown and ultimately black. So it becomes brittle also. And the third damage over here is um, um, where the, uh, element, the artwork is is covered with grime, a lot of grime that you can't even see what is underneath it. So multiple layers of grime and all, and there are, there was loss of paint over here also. So this is one portion where the, uh, of the arch of the window where you can see, otherwise this, these are the similar paintings are on the wall panel, which is covered by glass. And uh, this portion is actually, the background is white in all of them. But here it is not appearing white because 
the varnish had um, darkened and become brittle. And because of its um, getting brittle and shrinking, these cracks have developed and uh, there are loss of uh, paint in different areas. And these gaps were, from time to time, they were being, I think, repaired by just putting a little paint because this is a green background. So this loss was just, um, there was some uh, green paint put on it. And this was actually white, but uh, because it is uh, darkened varnish, so it was appearing yellowish. So th this area is uh, co colored with yellow. So this kind of um, faulty restoration is, was also there. At that point in time, this is again another example of the same flaking. And you can see here, this is uh, not the original white. There, there are some brush strokes of fresh white being painted. Uh, here also, I think it is visible in a much better form. This is the old restoration. And um, this is again, uh, these are old um, retouchings. Conservation treatment included, again, uh, basically what we do in conservation is we want to remove anything that, that is damaging, that may further damage the uh, object or painting in future. And uh, you can call it cleaning, but it is not general cleaning with some cleansing agents like Colin or something uh, or a soap, but it is very specific. We have to know the pH and the solvents or whether it is a sap very mild kind of saponifying agent, what percentage, so, uh, or it should we use a gel? So uh, it's a very uh, uh, advanced kind of, very subtle kind of cleaning for conservation. Then we also want to, because most of the things with age are getting weak and they're torn or they have lost areas there. So we want to add some strength through a material or technique which uh, is compatible with the original and is re reversible or retreatable. And the last thing that we want to do is preservation, either by adding some preservative coating or putting it in an environment which is not damaging, the microenvironment is controlled. Now, pre-consolidation was done because at times you can't even clean if it is very fragile. So um, uh, there were places like that panel, which was an earlier slide, the plain paint was flaking off. So we can't even clean it unless and until we have stabilized it. Even in the window arches, we couldn't clean unless and until uh, we know that the paint layer is stable enough. So we tried different methods. One of these is, uh, and all of them are reversible. They give us some strength. Uh, initially, uh, one of them is like this, and but this wasn't used everywhere. Um, mostly, uh, we preferred the other method, but initially we had tried all of them. So the other one is, uh, I'll just explain this one, why we tried this. This is a kind of, uh, this is a spray of kind of microcrystalline wax, and um, uh, this uh, sublimes with time. So when it, we spray it and of course remove the excess of it with a solvent. So whatever little, if you see in these areas, it has gone into the cracks. Uh, in this picture, it is not very clear, but I had some more pictures. Uh, somehow I couldn't get the time to add that picture. It had gone into the cracks. And this thing was removed with a cotton dipped in a solvent. And um, in the depths, it was there, but on the from the surface, we had removed it. So what happens then you can clean this area. We know there is a varnish which needs to be removed. It is brittle and it is um, um, brown. So um, uh, we got the time because it was strengthened for a while and we got the time to clean it. And uh, by the time we completed cleaning after a few days, this whole wax sublimes, it goes into the, nothing is left. Uh, and then we can do the proper permanent consolidation. The cleaning is done and we can do the consolidation. So this is one picture of the cleaning uh, in the window arched background area. And um, uh, we use triethanolamine, also very uh, mild cleansing agent in certain panels. And this is again with triethanolamine. You can see we haven't done any retouching just by cleaning. It looks like new now. It was earlier like this. 
and we use some solvent based gels also just to test initially because it, for there was varnish in the areas and um, these are those test patches you can see the result and uh, the paint which was flaking off was also later on consolidated by injecting some consolidants conservation grade consolidants which are reversible you can remove them anytime this is all fixing the flaking of paints. You can see here, it is not flaking, it is lost. The paint is no more there. So it had to be in painted after giving a proper strength. Not the whole thing is painted. We just uh, uh, paint the areas which are the gaps. We fill them, bring them to the level of the original paint layer and then do the in painting. And it, you can't make out from a distance. So filling and consolidation was done all over. This is another very fine example um, uh, done by the first team that came and I'll show you the picture of uh, those young conservators who were just learning. This was, I think the first experience they were learning. And this is the brittle um, varnish is making the paint layer also come off and it was filled just from the, and we have tried to uh, save as much whatever paint layer is left, only the losses are filled. This is another example of a window uh, back, back portion and uh, how we just fill it. And we just, we are not painting this already uh, the, the, where the paint, is, the paint layer is already there. We don't overpaint it, but we just um, uh, paint the rest of the area where there is no paint layer by matching it with the pattern around. Another example of the window arch and the back. This is the whole arch. Actually, this is the back area, which is uh, facing the sarovar. And there must have been earlier some losses and which were filled by Sunali because uh, it is golden, uh, which is used to paint furniture and all. So we had to remove all these deteriorating agents and um, fill them with proper conservation grade material. And um, now this is how it looks. The whole, you, you should see that there is nothing new. It is the same thing, cleaned and strengthened. And this, these are the design elements of the arches. Initially, we couldn't even see that this was a gold gilding. Rest of the arches, all, the design elements also in other arches were totally black. Only after first cleaning test uh, patch, uh, we found that there was actually gold gilding inside. So we, and golding, gilding cannot be, you, can, you have to redo it. So it was, um, all the gaps were filled properly with the compatible material and they were done as before. So this is without the uh, artwork, the blue color outline. And during the process of like, this is how we made it, com completed it. And uh, then the gilding was done and then the painting. And this is what I was mentioning that it is a good thing that we are doing um, uh, it in a full public view because uh, the process is transparent and the curiosities, there were so many questions from the Sangha. They were very helpful also. Um, we had some problems also when um, uh, some of our work was wiped off because of the cleaning uh, that is done by Sangat regularly. But uh, it was overall a very nice, very enriching experience, both for the Sangat as well as the conservators. This is another example of a panel. We're just cleaning. It is mainly cleaning, no in painting, nothing. But in this panel, you can see there is a lot of loss of paint. And this, when we had removed the glass, immediately we had put cyclododecane, sprayed the cyclododecane because the paint was coming off. So we couldn't take the picture before it because our first action was to preserve whatever little pieces are left. And uh, then we treated it uh, properly, cleaned and consolidated further in painting also done. This is another close up of the same panel. These are the pillars, one, one pillar, one of the many pillars. And this is again a design element which was totally broken in Harki Pori, the first floor area where there's a big bead. And uh, 
this is how it was after because we could make out there were some uh, there was another element which wasn't broken uh, that much and we could see the shading how it was and we could exactly make the same thing so uh, we have been doing a lot of of restructuring uh, process also. These are the ceilings and just by cleaning, you can see that uh, there's a huge difference, but from a distance, there is nothing more than cleaning, but there were actually, this is also cleaning, huge difference you can see. This is uh, above the Herkipore area where there's a big bead side G and um, these are these were the small losses which you can't make out from a distance because they are not white initially. They just uh, um, merge with the surroundings and you can't make out. So there were many of them and I have pictures of all those and we had created, recreated all the lost areas and then gilded them. This is that where the big bead is there and... Um, it was like this, I have a picture without this bulb on and it was totally dark and uh, you can see the next picture after conservation without any light, there are no bulbs here now, but uh, just by its, uh, itself, the gold gilding when it was cleaned and uh, it had to be done again also, especially in these arches. This was completely lost, this whole area was lost. If you see in the previous picture, it was all lost. So the whole thing is over here, the, everything is lost and lime is visible, the white lime is visible. So it was uh, done properly and these, this was the element, one of the elements of, one of these elements was broken and we had created in, that you saw in the earlier slide. This was the first team, uh, Vajida, Nuri and uh, they were from Leh. And uh, some were from Delhi, some, uh, some were from other states of India. And after this, many artists also came when the in-painting work, work was to be done. And somehow I couldn't include all the pictures, but this was the very first team and they're very young uh, conservators, very fresh. And uh, just these two, I think, had a little two month experience in Leh Ladakh. And uh, let's see, uh, that, that was all for Darbar Sahib Ji. And I would just share a few more pictures about what other things uh, we were able to do. This was Jora Sahib Ji from Chuck Village. Um, the, uh, and this was all broken in pieces and it was properly conserved. I couldn't do more than this because that would have been more intervention. So the thumb rule is minimum intervention. We don't have to add anything. I think in this, there was a little support, invisible kind of support added because it was all pieces. And uh, there were some hukam namas. Uh, these were, you won't find anything wrong with this, but this these were laminated and they had a, wood backing which is very damaging for paper and this if you see in this picture this is more stable one uh, I have many pictures but I don't have time and this lamination is coming off and it was taking off the ink also with it so it was important to remove the um, lamination and this is how what we are doing maybe this maybe this was a uh, damage and uh, uh, this is the plastic laminate and there was uh, some patch added to, uh, to this to support it and we carefully removed it. There were patches, stickers at the back and we had used, this is actually a very thin, um, you can say it is a paper, special paper, uh, three microns or two microns thick. And we would first, we um, give the support of this and then a thicker one. So I'm working here on this and this is the final thing. And we put it in a acid-free uh, board. The backing is also acid-free and the front is also acid-free. And this reflection is because I have put a mylar conservation grade, you can say plastic kind of sheet but it is conservation grade. Then this is 10th Guru's the Star Sahib Ji um, that uh, was in a very bad shape and we just, it shouldn't be folded at the folds, it was breaking off. And uh, this is how after conservation we rolled it. 
This is uh, Janam Sakhi, just one page of Janam Sakhi during conservation process. Uh, that's all, and another, another. this is a canvas painting of Gunanak Dev Ji by Soba Singh. You won't find any difference in before and after picture, but here you can see there were uh, flaking, huge flaking and paint was coming off. And uh, it was, and it was, it was very interesting because normally the flaking is in the background, but here I found once I removed the canvas from the backing, wooden backing, board backing, that, um, uh, there was a huge colonies of uh, many colonies of fungus uh, at the back of it. And this was because of that fungus that uh, it was a normal cracking that we find in uh, canvas or oil paintings. That's all. Thank you so much. And this is uh, my business name is Heritage uh, Preservation Atelier. Uh, Thank you, Namita. Thank you so much. Um, I know I have a lot of questions for you, and I know there's a lot of, lot of questions uh, from the audience as well. So I'm just going to go with some of the questions that came. One of them was from Arvinder Malotra. He said, has any carbon dating been done to uh, tell us the age of the Chola Saib? How old is yeah. it? Or, yeah. yeah. I would just like to answer this. I think I had, uh, uh, I uh, it was asked me earlier also, carbon dating is actually, it needs a lot of sample. So, but we have a technique now, we are working on it, uh, which can date with very small amount of a little fiber of uh, the fabric. And if it is silk, uh, then especially it would be very helpful because silk is proteinaceous. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. So we are working on it and I'm really keen to take um, a little fiber if it is there is some fallen fiber or something and do the testing with that new technique, which actually we have, I won't go into the technicalities. It is not testing the carbon, but the protein structure because protein structure also changes with time. And uh, we are in carbon dating, we are seeing that how carbon 12 is, how much carbon 12 has changed into carbon 14. Uh, in this, we'll, we'll be testing that how much protein is has turned from dextrorotatory to lever rotatory, or I think the other way around. Mm -hmm. So there is a new technique, it is still under development, and we will be using that if uh, given a chance. So in the near future, you, you're hoping we to can. do yeah. that? So another interesting question, uh, and I'm sure uh, this will interest a lot of our viewers, is as a woman leading a woman team, can you share some of your experiences uh, at both Darbar Sahib and Chola Sahib or anywhere else? Do you encounter any uh, interesting experiences? Uh not as such it's same because boys were also they joined in when yeah. we were doing the art con means in painting work mm -hmm. um uh not exactly within the team are you asking within the team or um, from the spaces like say when you went to darbar sahib and majority of your team comprised of women did you run yeah. into any issues or, or restrictions? No, no. Initially, it was a never. There was never such thing. But of course, in one area where there's a Guru Granth Sahib in the central area, mm -hmm. uh, there we were told not to. Uh, no, females can't um, um, walk on that uh, platform to that do that cleaning work. Rest of the thing we all did, and there was no issue. But there was one point when mm. that uh, area was, uh, that scaffolding was created. And uh, it was just, uh, we were allowed, like they, they said just uh, Amritdhari boys can uh, land on that platform. Mm. So that is it. Okay. Another interesting question was, uh, you had talked about, the, there was a painting that was painted over. Um, this question is from Simmer Singh. Did you notice any uh, paintings of gurus that were later painted over with flowers or floral motifs? No, we couldn't find any underpaintings uh, apart from the areas where there was a frame, wooden frame. Okay. So it they must have been 
covered by the frame so the rest of the portion was over painted there is just one uh, painting of uh, guru hargobind sahib ji 10th guru ji uh, in the staircase which is uh, which we i really because when i started its pictures very uh, close ups and you can say uh, zoomed in and all the pictures then i found that there was a lot of retouching done so i didn't want to touch that um, but we did a little bit of uh, consolidation you can say because things were coming off and that is a very um, corner kind of area in the staircase um, so that wasn't over painted but a lot of uh, retouchings because it's yeah. very old that is the oldest painting of uh, from um, maharaja ranjit singh's time that is the only one all rest of the paintings are 20th century paintings so okay. that is the only one which was the oldest so maybe there are many times like sevas are done and so there were i could find but i didn't do any microscopic study on that um uh, or chemical analysis i was a little scared of um, reaching that area so no other over paintings were seen yeah so one more question for you i mean we have a lot more questions but one question that uh, pops into my head is when you leave a site whether it is the chola sahib gurdwara or darbar sahib is there a level of education that you have to do for the the sevadars and the caretakers behind so that there is yeah. upkeep there's no further deterioration like how does that work and are people willing to learn and listen to you because you put in a lot of effort and you know decades of experience into conserving them but when you leave what happens then actually we had planned to create a manual for um, the whole organization sgpc is a very organized kind of organization and we thought that we'll uh, put all our suggestions over there mm -hmm. uh, but somehow we couldn't do it because the project took much longer than it was um, planned and uh, um but yes uh, as far as we are concerned we learn a lot and even the sevadars because their uh, uh, postings are changed their positions are changed but whoever uh, was there uh, when we were working there they learned a lot i think so and they were uh, uh, by the end of the project they they were much better in handling but of course some kind of tutorial or something should be there um because it would help a lot because otherwise when the cleanings are done they were mainly done with uh, wet towel and that damages that damages the paint surface so uh, sevadars can help the sangat in letting know that uh, what is good and what is not good for the bar sahib ji yeah okay um another question was did you ever discover any bullet holes or were bullet holes um destroyed any of the paintings or frescoes in your work there no i don't think so because i have touched almost each and every corner i don't think there was there is i saw maybe they were filled or something but on surface there was no there were no bullet holes you didn't you didn't maybe maybe the akal i think the akal takht might have had more than the darbar sahib yeah akal takht uh, no darshni deori has Vashni okay. Deori has bullet holes, and they are marked also. I think I'm not okay. sure, but I think they are marked. So Vashni Deori has a lot of bullet holes, but not inside. Not inside the bar, sir, per se. Yeah, not inside uh, the Parikrama where we were working on the first floor or Harki Pori, uh, the portion of above the Harki Pori. Yeah. So I don't remember having any such. Uh, yeah. Another question was do you seal the art in a way so that the public that does seva does not you know touch it in the future maybe with the glass uh, right now they are sorry yeah they are covered by glass except the staircase um but um, it it can be done better like we can have a micro environment the ceiling like in in a way that which controls the humidity so our work was still conservation of the paintings only otherwise if we we couldn't do the preservation part though i tried uh, in some of the open panels i tried um, one particular preservative coating which is scratch proof also so that if somebody scratches through or 
um there is no damage to the paint layer that was just tested on one panel and other console uh, other preservative coatings in indian environment they are not very successful they cause blanching and um, uh i think we can do better with glass with a better quality of glass and some kind of arrangement inside the glass which controls the humidity and the dirt so that can be done it's not right now it's, right now it's not done that way i know we discussed uh, another thing was the outside of the darbar sahib the gold plates or the copper plates that were gilded yes 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 what happens with that <laughs> yeah that is interesting because uh, mostly people um, out of faith we all want to touch and clean do the seva of gold and uh, we try to clean but we are cleaning till now what i have seen when i was there i was seeing every year we are cleaning we are scrubbing it mm. scrubbing it with um, tamarind water and uh, scrubbers because these sheets are actually gold gilded copper plates so the gold is very thin thin layer of gold no matter mm. how many gold leaves have been used it is not ac- actually the solid gold so mm. it is being abraded it is being worn off and uh, a better way would be for once um, i have some examples from word all word over also where this thing has been done there's a new technique and uh, we can just uh, f- first of all find out which are the areas do the mapping where the gold has uh, become thinner or lost totally and we can apply gold with the brush electroplating that is the technique um where we are just using a solution salt of gold and using electrodes and brushing that solution and it is uh, uh, depositing the gold on the plate so that way it would be adding gold but what we are doing right now is we are removing gold from the gold plates when we are cleaning it so that is one thing of course i believe in yeah interesting it can be done yeah. um i know there is one technical question here is uh where did it go Oh yeah. Um uh, I guess it disappeared. It was something about co- was was solvents used Oh yeah, r- was the majority of the varnish removed with solvent gels or mechanically with swabs? Okay, no, it wasn't actually our uh, the uh, saponifying agent that we were using for other panels that did a good job with the uh, varnish also. so we initially though we had tested solvents and gel solvent wasn't working well but its gel was working but even that was a little hard and when we tried the different formulation with a little 2 to 3 percent saponifying agent so it worked much better so we had used that so we haven't used uh, solvents so we tested and i have shown in the presentation also so initially we had tested all the things but uh, solvents because it has it had become insoluble the varnish was very old and it was very brittle so it wasn't dissolving that easily in the solvent so it had to be removed with a different formulation which, which included a saponifying agent interesting um yeah. this is a uh, maybe a a very uh may you can short answer this have you uh, looked into the frescoes and the paintings at baba atal rai which is right uh right yeah, next to darbar sahib yes yes and what i have seen think? yeah i have seen but not during that period when uh, we were working there because most of the work we wanted to work it in uh, finish it in time but uh, it was stretching too much so earlier i had seen but the, there some conservation work was already going on by a different team so hmm. uh, i can't uh, co- comment on that yeah So there's there was a different team that was working on the Yeah, it, they the were working there since I think many years or something. I don't remember um but I think um SGPC and the team they were off and on working over there, not continuously, but I think off and on. Okay. I'm not sure about that because I haven't seen much of it. Okay. I know the paintings I have visited much earlier, much before we started mm-hmm. work over here. yeah um i had a question for you um so you're based in chandigarh and you do a lot of work in punjab and other states uh, a lot of us watching today are from you know uk canada the us and other parts of the world 
Do you have any sort of expectations from the Sikh community in the diaspora? Are you looking for something from Jimek and then a Barde Sikh per se? Hanji. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about expectation life has uh, somehow pushed me like uh, yeah welcomed me to on this path I was totally not I was more of a science person maybe that's why it helped also right. and uh, actually one auntie from Gudani Kala she um, um, she is in US since 1970s and uh, she introduced me and right now also she is so keen on working on various uh, objects of Sikh heritage mm -hmm. and um, but uh, um, I don't know there are many factors there are fundings also right now my lab is a very small room uh, right. a little larger room and yeah. um, so there are things uh, that can be done maybe together and um, she was the one who introduced me to Chola Sahib Ji. It was from her village only. And she funded it. She did the seva and arranged all the material and the salaries and all for conservators. So, yes, this kind of work can be done. There are many more. There is one Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Chola Sahib, which needs conservation. There is one 10th Guru's uh, at uh, Anandpur Sahib. There is one another one, which I don't remember the village, but that is again of 10th Guru Sahib Ji. And uh, that was in pieces and it can be maybe brought it back into shape and all. So there are so many things, so many things that can be done. And uh, of course, this is a very, uh, this uh, I'm really, um, uh, I should thank all of you again that uh, you gave me a um, chance to communicate and maybe uh, we can do things together. Uh, we can do, uh, preserve a lot of Sikh heritage together. Uh, thank you so much for, for your time. Uh, I think we have one question and then we will be wrapping it up after that is what are some projects that you are working on this year and looking forward to next year that are ongoing or are going to start next year? Okay. Um, I don't know about next year. Right now I am working on um, like I worked a little on in Patiala in Kila Mubarak and but that is um, right now it is at halt and um, um, there's some work going on in Ratha Chatur and um, I'm also working on another there are two more spiritual organizations one is in Gujarat mm -hmm. uh, their work is almost done but they keep on they are con constantly in touch with me like whenever they whatever they need they have huge collection of their guruji and uh, they are doing it slowly so i just guide them um almost every year mm -hmm. i spend uh, some time and there's another organization which dev samaj in himachal mm -hmm. uh, they have a, some colleges and schools in chandigarh also so they are also now doing uh, the conservation work is almost done. Now I am taking up their preservation. Now, all the objects that have been conserved would now be preserved in microenvironment controlled display cases and microenvironment controlled storage boxes. So that is how um, we are trying to preserve. And uh, so we are setting up their museum also. Mm -hmm. where, uh, have you taken a look at um, the, the museum that's at Darbar Sahib? Yeah, I have. And uh, rather, because I'm too small for that thing, there was a tender and um, I wanted to do it because all the museums not right now in India, they don't have preventive microenvironment display cases or storage cases. Uh, they are normal boxes kind of thing. So I wanted to do something over there because there's a very nice collection of painting, everything, all kind of artifacts and um, armory and all. So I have applied in um, its long time back, 2015 it was there and uh, in uh, collaboration in uh, consortium with the uh, uh, two Italian firms okay. who are mainly, one is an old lady uh, and uh, uh, she's very much experienced. She has done Vatican also in Italy. So in designing and all, so she's very much experienced. So I have picked up a two, three organizations and we have made a consortium oh. and applied, but it is 2020 now, five years on, but uh, there was no decision made. 
Okay, well, hopefully so we there have is been a short. decision. decision yeah. uh, we were shortlisted and we were in last two or three firms, but yeah. again, yeah. So okay. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Namita, for your time, for your expertise, and uh, the tireless work that you do uh, behind the scenes, you know, preserving our Sikh heritage and making sure that the coming generations uh, can see and experience this beautiful, rich heritage. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank everybody. Thank you, Sammit. And <laughs> thank you, Sikh, Her uh, Sikh Foundation International. Yep. It was really my pleasure to be able to share all the experiences and conservation needs this kind of, um, uh, you can say, uh, people don't know much about this field of work. So thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. And join us uh, next time. Some of the next uh, panelists are on the screen. We have uh, Fakir Safuddin, Diamond Sordi, yeah. and Nadra Khan. So for the next wow. few exciting weeks, uh, keep, keep it uh, locked on the Facebook page. And yeah, thank you sure. so much and have a good evening. Yeah. Good morning, good night, wherever you are. <laughs> That's your call. Yeah, thank you.